making thousands nearly every day from my phone and my laptop. Millionaire coaches always intrigue us, but like many, we're skeptical of them too, especially the ones who guarantee that they can help us turn a few hundred dollars into millions. So when Stephen Dux, an online millionaire coach, inquired if he could be a sponsor in order to share his story and his method, we had our reservations. But then we realized it would be a great opportunity to explore this phenomenon of millionaire coaches and agree to have Stephen on the show, only under the conditions that he would be honest about his life, his work, and of course, allow our audience to ask him anything. Hi, my name is Steven Ducks. I'm a millionaire. I've turned $27,000 into $5 million within four years by trading stocks. I've come here to answer any questions. Maybe you're the first millionaire I've ever had a chance to have an actual conversation with. I guess this wasn't going to be my first question, but how old are you? I'm 25 years old, so I'm not that far from you. So I have grandchildren probably as old as you are. Has anybody ever thought you were lying, like when you mentioned it to them? Well, my neighbor think I'm a drug dealer. <laughs> Do you think it's ethical to accumulate so much wealth and not give back to society? Well, it depends on how they accumulate their wealth. And if they're helping people while accumulating wealth, I think it's ethical. This is an oversimplification, but if you made $2 million, it might be fair to say that 20 people lost $100,000. Are you okay with that? Yeah, very interesting question. It's a very competitive society, so you have to be responsible to your, for your own mistakes, not blame on others. Are you a math whiz? Sort of. What's 88 times 75? Nah, I don't know. <laughs> what does a day look like in your life? I wake up at 9 a.m., around 8 or 9, and I look at the general market and make a decision, should I trade today or not? If I trade, I will stay about extra two hours. That's like your first thing you do? Yeah, it's the first thing oh, I do. Oh, okay, nice. After that, I'll just go to lunch. Could I'll I ask spend... what you eat for lunch? What I eat for lunch? Usually. Chip Chipotle. Nice, oh, good choice, <laughs> good choice. Uh, what's the craziest thing you've spent a large amount of money on? Okay, so I'm a huge car fan. I had uh, a Ferrari 488 Spider. That cost about around 500K. Did you like grow up like being financially stable or? So I was an exchange student from, uh, from China. I came here when I was 16. Back in, I would say the 70s, my mom was already a millionaire mm -hmm. and my dad was a soldier, which is considered to be poor in that state. So um, my mom had my brother and we have to move to a different city. My mom sold all their business to my dad and my dad become a multi-millionaire, a lot of millions. He basically changed into an entire different person. There's more family violence, there's more, you know, cursing and in the families. And uh, my mom was basically in suffering and he wasn't appreciated at all from my mom basically give all his, her money to him to start as, you know, as a investment at the beginning. I'm not comfortable seeing that type of people. And uh, even though my dad has millions, I'm not looking up to him. So my mom always taught me that yeah, it doesn't really matter if you have money or not. You, has to, you, you have to respect people. You have to respect people that will help you at the beginning. I want to you know, become the opposite of my dad. Even though I went from the bottom to the top, I was still won't become the person that he, that he did. Do you ever think of the fact that people like Warren Buffett or Ray Dalio come out really strongly against day trading, how so many financial experts would say that day trading is akin to gambling. How many professional football players can make over $2 million a year? Not that many. And how many people try to play professional football? A lot. And uh, the only successful people can be you know, about within 10%. Same thing with day tradings. And if you're going into this industry, if you're not prepared to be the top percent and you just want to get in there and make quick money, then you're going to be you know, the 90% people going to lose money. Do you believe that anyone can become a millionaire? I don't believe anyone can become a millionaire because a lot of people don't really have the motivations to do it. Second, they don't really want to step out of their comfort zones. Do you ever feel anxious in how you might calm your own anxiety? I do get a lot of, you know, anxious at the beginning as well. The first major mistakes you make, the second thought is, I want to make that money back. Now, as soon as you have that second thought, you make the second mistake, then it's a chain reaction. You keep making mistakes until you blow up your account. 
the way to deal with that is just shut down your computer and come back fresh the next day. And a lot of people can't do that. It's very difficult to control your emotions, uh, especially you're playing with real money, but it just takes practices. It seems as though when you describe your methods, you can make money at will. If that's the case, then why sell classes? And if you searched about day trading, there's a lot of schemes. I'm the victim of that type of courses. So I generated one course. It's full with content, no bullshit, and you just go straight to the point. I want to become the opposite of how they're sitting courses. But if it was really about helping people and you're like financially set, you've got millions of dollars, yeah. then wouldn't you just want to like give away this information or charge considerably less? When I studied, I spent 10 hours a day, 365 days with no break. And that's for the first year. And I can't just give stuff out there for free. Has your millions brought you a lot of happiness? The more money you gain in a young age, the less friend do you, ha you have. It's because you don't really have a similar topic. And uh, once you spend majority of time you know, diving into the market, and a lot of people in college, they are spending their time partying and building their relationships, and you guys don't really have a similar topic. Has being a millionaire impacted your relationships? Well, you can kind of tell people are come for you as a person or for your money. Being a millionaire, you get a lot of straightforward gold diggers, <laughs> yeah. Where do you usually meet people? Probably workspace. I work a lot. I don't really go out that much. Do you have a girlfriend? Uh, no. No? Yeah, for now, no. Do you think you need to, when you date somebody, you need to find somebody else who shares that interest with you? Yes, um, and that's the reason why it's so hard to find a girlfriend. When I meet people, I was a little bit shy and uh, don't really know how to talk to people. And when I talk to girls, and uh, you know, pretty much 50% of the info in my head are about you know, generating data and engineering and numbers. Don't really share the same interests. It's hard to get along. Have you had like a successful long-term relationship where you felt like someone was interested in, in who you, you are as a person and not your money? Yes, I had one, but it was a heartbreaking one. That's where I started trading and trying to be better of myself. So that heartbreak inspired you to start trading? Yes. Wow. So yeah. you were not a millionaire during this relationship? No, I was not. Yeah, nope. Have you had contact with this person? Does she now see like, man, I missed out? I don't think she cares. Yeah, that's the problem. So I, so I started dating this girl when I was 19. And uh, at that time, I wasn't trading. I wasn't have any type of money at all. Um, I was an engineer student. I was so dedicated to this relationship. Um, and I spent pretty much all my money to buy a ring. And uh, once I bought a ring, about to propose, and she turned around and said uh, she was with a darn man. And uh, that's, yeah, that's where just I turned into a completely different person. Once you go through a breakup, and the first thing you want to do is you want to know, you think yourself are not good, and you want to get better. And I started to, you know, start investing and save my money and go to the gym, become better myself. And uh, been going good since there. Well, I feel like that emotional driving force was something that kind of led you to kind of take away the negativity. And and it's really tough too. to go through as a, you know, 20 year old kid at the same yeah, time. Yeah, that's so true. Well, thank you so much for sharing. No that was really cool being able to hear your story. No I appreciate that. Thank you for watching the video. Stephen, would you like to mention where they can find information on your products? So you can find my courses at stephenduxy.com. And currently we are building this AI system and including my strategies of the scanners. Currently it's still in beta test versions, so we're likely to release during the spring. And we're also uh, accepting limited amount of spots, so if you want to get your emails down in the link in descriptions, I will have to accept that. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Bye. Bye.